Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome to Unity Game Essentials, where we're covering the basics you need to make your games in Unity. Now, we've covered how to make a main menu, now we're going to take a look at how to make a pause menu in your game. The first thing we'll need to do is create the actual menu within the world that we want to use. So what we'll do is go to, uh, we're, we're, we're in our level scene here, which is a basic simple little scene, which is if we press play, we have a little ball that bounces up and down. And if you um, didn't watch the previous video, or you're just coming into this video, uh, just down below this, the video itself in the description will be a link to the assets for this um, project that we have going here. Nice and straightforward. Basically includes this little ball bouncing up and down and another main menu scene with a rotating cube. Uh, but all we're concerned about right now is this ball bouncing up and down and making a pause so that we can understand how our game is pausing. So to have our game be pausing we want to have a menu that our players can interact with. So we'll go to game object and then UI and we're going to add a new image and that'll create a canvas with an image here and we make sure that we're in our 2D view here. Make sure it's just a flat image that we're looking at. Then we're going to grab this white object and we're going to stretch it out to all the corners of this screen. And we want to make sure that we cover the white box which represents the UI's kind of working area. Then we're going to change this image, the, the color of the image, to be black and then we're going to take the alpha value and pull it down like this. So what that will do is basically when you pause the game it will darken the whole screen. So if I just close out of that for a second, if I turn this on and off, you can see, okay, the player will be playing away on the game, and then when they go to pause, the screen will turn on, and it'll go darker. So that's fine, that will indicate that something has changed, but we can do a little bit more than that. First of all, let's just cause th call this the pause screen, oh, not with a B at the end of it. And then we're going to make, as a child of this, a new text object, so we're going to right click on it, and then go to UI text which will create a text object in the middle uh, and then we're going to change the color of this text to white and I'm going to make it uh, quite a bit bigger like this and we're going to make sure we click and drag and if you click and drag it kind of roughly into the center it'll snap to the middle line which means that this box is centered on the center line of our uh, overall object so now I'm going to align the text into the middle by hitting the middle alignment buttons here and we'll make our text bigger like this and then we'll just change what our text screen says to paused so our players will know that the game is paused so it gives you a more direct feedback of what's going on okay so we have our pause screen and we have our text here and uh, we also need some buttons for our players to be able to see what's going on so we're going to create and not as a child of the text object, but again, as a child of the pause screen, we're going to create a UI button. Again, we'll drag it out to make it bigger. If I hold Alt, we can kind of center the object in the middle, like so. We will make the text be bigger too, by increasing the font size. And we're going to make the text say, resume game. And much like we did in our previous video, we want to make sure that this object uh, looks more interactable for the player and we're going to delete the, the default sprite attached to it we're going to change the highlight color to be a bit darker and the press color to be darker again so we've got our resume game button and we're going to duplicate this so we can right click and hit duplicate or we can hit Control and D to duplicate it and we're going to move it down to here like so and we're going to hit uh, return or we're going to type in return to main like so apparently I like putting B's in my words uh, and then on the text here we'll just say uh, we'll just say main main menu like so okay okay so we've got our pause menu all set up the way we want it to if we go and turn the pause screen here off and on you can see it looks like our little pause menu is appearing as we go we've got our little ball there in the background but of course if we hit play now 
and we were to turn on our pause screen that's not very good is it we have we're saying paused but the ball in the background is bouncing up and down and of course it's because we haven't actually done anything with any scripts or anything like that so we're going to create a new script to actually manage our pause screen here i'm just going to turn it back on in our view i'm going to go into the scripts folder and create a new c sharp script that we'll call menu controller and we'll open this up we'll reload the solution it's fine and then what we need to do is first of all we create some functions to handle what our actual um, buttons are going to do so that will be our public void resume game like so and public void uh, return to main we'll just call it oh no we got we went a little bit wild there there we go just fix these up of course this should have a capital or as functions generally speaking have capital letters to start them off um now our return to main will be very much like we did in our previous uh, main menu script that, that loaded into this level essentially what our return to main will do is load into the main menu scene so let's set that one up first we're going to say public string main menu scene like so we need to make sure that we are using unity engine dot scene management and then down here we say scene manager dot load scene and then we load the main menu scene whatever we tell that to be within the editor okay so that's perfectly fine the next thing we need to do however is we have our resume game function we'll come to that in a little bit but to start off with we're going to take a look at how do we actually activate the pause menu within the world so if we go back into unity here if we were to put that script that we just created the menu controller on the pause screen whenever we have this deactivated it within the world then we wouldn't actually be able to do anything because if the script is on this object and we have it deactivated so the player can't see it well what that means is oh it won't be able to check and see what um what what the player is doing does the player press any button to activate it no well okay that's not very good we can't really check if that's if anything's happening so what we'll do is put our menu controller on our canvas script so the reason we're discussing this is this is just to be aware of where you put your scripts is actually important um, and in here i'm just going to type in the name of our main menu like so so then we know that because this isn't on our pause screen we'll need a reference to this pause screen to be able to activate it and deactivate it and we'll also need a way of keeping track of whether we are currently paused or not so that's how we'll determine whether we're activating our pause screen so here we're going to say public game object that we will call our pause menu and then we'll also have a public bool that we'll call is paused like so and basically what we want to do is in our update loop here is check whenever the player presses a button a specific button uh, that will turn the pause menu on or off so here we can say if the player has some input so we're using if input dot get key down so basically we're checking if a key has been uh, pressed and the specific key we want to press is key code dot escape escape generally speaking being the normal button that everyone expects to be the pause button within uh, any kind of pc game in um in modern gaming basically of course you can set this to be whatever button you want it doesn't actually matter what we do but we're going to stick with escape and then the next thing we do is check if the game is paused then we're going to do something else we're going to do something different so basically if the game is paused we'll do a bit of code here and if it's not paused then we'll do another bit of code so let's assume in the regular flow of the game by default our game will not be paused 
Uh, so we'll we'll go with if not is paused here. So we'll say as soon as the button is pressed and we're not already paused, well then in that case is paused should be set to true. We're going to make sure that we activate the pause menu. So we'll say pause menu dot set active true. So we're using the function set active and we're setting it to be true. And then the next thing, um, actually we'll see how this works first before we do the next thing. Um, but we want to say, okay, so this is what will happen when we set the pause menu to be true. And we're saying is pause should also be true. So basically in the opposite situation, if it's already paused, well then is paused should be false. And our pause menu dot set active should also be false. So we'll save this, go back into Unity. We'll let that compile. And then we know we have a reference here to our pause menu. So I'm going to click and drag that into there. And then I'm also going to deactivate our pause screen by default. And we'll hit control and save. Uh, I'm just going to maximize this one we play as well. So I'm going to hit play. And now if I hit escape, we can see our pause menu appears. And if I hit escape again, we're turning our pause menu on and off. So perfect. That works the way we want it to. But of course our ball is still bouncing up and down, which we don't want. And how we stop that is essentially within Unity, we just freeze time. We freeze any action that's happening within our game. We just say, okay, anything that's running, any update loops that are happening, we stop them. We don't let them happen anymore. So we'll say, um, again, we'll deal with, if we're not already paused and we're setting our pause to be true, we're turning on our pause menu. And in that moment, we will also say, time dot time scale equals zero so we're saying that the speed the time scale is basically the speed that time runs at within unity you can use this to slow down time as well um if you want to but for our purposes we just want to absolutely stop time so we'll say time dot time scale is equal to zero basically don't run any time anymore and conversely when we want to unpause the game here we say time dot time scale equals one f so one f being the default basic speed of time that we normally run with so i'm going to save this go back into unity let that compile and then we'll hit play and now when we bounce and pause if we hit pause our ball freezes in place we resume you can see working perfectly exactly the way we want it to so let's make sure our functions work for our buttons now. I'm going to actually hook them up now and then we'll finish writing the resume game function. So by default, our resume game and our return to main, if we highlight both of them, we can add a new function for both of them. They're both running on the same uh, script, so we can drag our canvas into there, which we know has our script on it. We'll just go to our menu controller and we'll just pick resume game because that works for one of them we'll have to do the same thing on the other one anyway so now they're both set to actually call the resume game function but if we go to return to main again we'll go to menu controller and then return to main so if i just hit save just to make sure that this is working for us we're going to hit play and there we go we can hit main menu we'll go back to the main menu that we previously set up so let's set up our resume game function so our resume game function, we know that we're basically in a situation where the game is paused and we want to unpause it. So we're essentially doing the exact same thing as we have up here. So what we can do is just copy and paste that. So we're just going to copy that we already have, paste it in down there. Now, the only thing is, generally speaking, within code, you should, you should avoid having lines that are repeated. So at the moment here, this little section obviously is the exact same as up here as what we just pasted in and it's okay to do if you just have one line of code if that's being repeated in multiple places that's fine but we've got three separate lines of code here so you don't really want to repeat that so instead of having them both be the exact same what we'll do here is whenever we're unpausing the game instead of doing all that stuff we will just call the resume game function like so oops there we go we've got our resume game function so it'll go okay if we are already paused and we hit escape then go to the resume game function and it'll do all of this stuff here 
So now we can save that, go back into Unity, and we'll let this resume like so. Uh, oh, we have our pause menu actually turned on by default. Let's just turn that off. And now if I pause it and hit resume game, it goes back into action. If I hit escape, it does the exact same thing. So perfect. Our pause menu is working exactly the way we want it to. Or at least it seems like it's working the way we want it to. There's one little extra thing that might not uh, occur to you if you're kind of running through your game. But it's a very, very important thing to uh, remember. Because when you're testing, sometimes you can go, you can pause, you can say, okay, I'm going to pause, I'll go back to the main menu, and okay, yeah, that all works perfectly fine, and we'll stop and go back to whatever we're doing. However, if we play it again, if we hit escape, we go to our main menu, and we go to start a new game again, uh-oh, our ball, our ball isn't moving. If we pause it and unpause it, oh, look, our ball is moving again. So what's going on here? Basically, what happens is, if we go back to our script, when we pause the game, we stop our time, and then we go back to the main menu, and it loads up our main scene, but our time is still frozen. So we go back to the main menu. The main menu works perfectly fine because it's, it seems like it works perfectly fine, but if you notice, our cube wasn't rotating on the main menu. You might not have caught it as we were going through, but it wasn't rotating because time was frozen. And when we started a new game, our time was still frozen. So we need to make sure that when we are in a pause state and we go to load into another scene, we need to make sure that we always, at that point, set our time dot time scale back to be one. So we need to make sure that we set it back to be running at the default time speed. So we'll go back into Unity again, hit play, and now if we hit escape, go back to our main menu, you can see our little cube is rotating in the background again, and we go to new game, and our ball is bouncing away. So perfect, that's exactly, we need to make sure that we remember to do that uh, when you're creating your pause menu. But there you go, that's our pause menu added to the game, and the next thing we're going to take a look at is adding some options into that pause menu including how to handle uh, the screen size and whether we want our, the screen of our game to be windowed or unwindowed.